Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Christina Meyer. I'm a research health policy analyst with RTI International Center for Global Non-Communicable Diseases, and today I'm going to be discussing the development of household and ambient air pollution investment cases. Uh, next slide, please. So in terms of the work that we've already completed, we've had the opportunity to uh, develop an ambient air pollution cost of illness analysis methodology, um, as well as an investment case methodology for household air pollution due to cook stove use. Uh, for the household air pollution work, we've also built a module for the WHO's BARHAP tool to assess the burden of household air pollution due to cook stove use. And we've applied uh, both of these methods uh, in the Nigerian context to create national uh, economic burden uh, results and reports that were completed in spring of uh, 2022. And I believe are under review right now by the government. So our current work that we're um, working on developing is an ambient air pollution investment case methodology to build on the cost of illness work that we've already done. The goal is to have this uh, ready to share uh, in the spring of 2023. And um, we're hoping to share the methods with the UNDP country offices in Ethiopia, Mongolia, and India to create country-specific investment cases. And uh, these country offices have already conducted the household air pollution investment case analyses and the ambient air pollution cost of illness analyses. Next slide, please. So in terms of uh, the approach that we took, the first step to the air pollution investment case is conducting an exposure assessment. Uh, because the household air pollution is really focused on cook stove use, we rely on national survey data for this. Uh, for ambient air pollution, the story is a little bit different in that there's limited uh, structures for um, monitoring uh, pollution in many of the countries that we're looking to apply this methodology to. So we've instead applied satellite data and geospatial analysis to get a better understanding of exposure um, to uh, specific pollutant, which is particulate matter um, uh, PM2.5. And so from there, we're able to estimate the excess cause specific mortality and morbidity attributable to air pollution, focusing largely on acute lower respiratory infection, as well as uh, four NCDs, including lung cancer, COPD, stroke, and ischemic heart disease. So uh, the next step is for us to estimate the pollution attributable economic burden. So for both ambient and household air pollution, we look at health uh, related losses including losses from premature mortality using a VSL approach, and then healthcare expenditures. The ambient air pollution methodology includes, includes productivity losses, and the household air pollution also includes some environmental and social losses as well. For example, uh, time expenditures to collect firewood for fuel, as well as um, kilograms of woody biomass lost from forests because of demand for cook stove fuel. In terms of the intervention selection and return on investment for the household air pollution, uh, because it largely focuses on cook stove transitioning, the interventions uh, look at uh, those that facilitate the process, including uh, fuel or cook stove subsidies, technology bans, or other forms of financing. For ambient air pollution, we've conducted a scoping literature review to identify interventions, particularly among road transport, uh, agriculture, waste, residential, industry, and energy sectors. And we've also had to investigate the association between global emission inventory data and global exposure data in order to understand how the effect sizes for interventions on emissions translates to changes in exposure and therefore changes on the burden of health. Uh, next slide, please. So to give you a bit of a taste of uh, the uh, burden associated with these types of air pollution. So in Nigeria, household air pollution due to cook stove use is responsible for about $10.9 billion in economic, social, and environmental losses annually. And exposure to excess ambient air pollution is responsible for about $13 billion annually in Nigeria. The majority of air pollution related mortality and morbidity is attributable to acute lower respiratory infections followed by cardiovascular disease and regionally within the country northern nigeria bears a more significant uh, burden associated with exposure to air pollution uh, compared to other parts of the country 
So some of the lessons that we've learned include some challenges. So uh, in the absence of local air pollution monitoring systems and data, we've been able to apply uh, satellite data. Um, however, there is the outstanding issue of because of the absence of local air pollution monitoring systems and data, there are very limited intervention studies, um, which makes um, it a bit challenging to apply these in the inv investment case uh, studies. So the dispersive and climate driven nature of environmental pollutants can make the generalizability of interventions uh, difficult. Um, and furthermore, uh, while exposure assessments uh, are generally used to understand the health impacts for air pollution, uh, the air pollution intervention effect sizes that we've seen for ambient air pollution are generally reported in reductions of emissions. So uh, kilotons of a pollutant rather than changes in population exposure. Um, so we've had to look into how to link those two together, um, which has been a really um, interesting and complex process. But what we do encourage is further collaboration with earth scientists and other environmental health experts as this is a very cross-cutting issue. And there's a wealth of resources that they've worked on, um, including the development of global satellite data and the different emissions and exposure inventories, which have been really critical to developing our investment cases. So with that, I thank you for your time and I want to thank UNDP for all of their collaboration and uh, support on this project.